So welcome back. So today I'm going to introduce you to another rifle I've got. It's the Martini Cadet or the 310 Cadet. Now these little rifles are a very Australian iconic rifle. Uh, these were based on a series of small caliber sporting rifles that were made and manufactured by W.W. W. Greener in the United Kingdom at the start of the 20th century. Um, Australia then adopted this small single shot rifle uh, to equip uh, army cadets or school cadets in Australia at the time. And so this series is going to be, uh, I'm going to go through describing the rifle and showing the rifle. I'm also going to take it to the range, get some nice footage of it being shot. And I'm also going to go through the particulars of hand loading for this rifle as the ammunition is not available commercially anymore. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the two-part series that I create and uh, hope you get a lot of information out of it. Thank you. All right, so let's talk about the um, 310 Cadet a little more and get in depth and show a, show this one here. So the 310 Cadet is a very much um, an Australian iconic uh, rifle. Um, it was introduced in the early 1900s by the federal government um, to equip uh, a cadet scheme uh, that they instigated throughout Australia in all states. So they purchased a, a number of these rifles which all went out to the separate states and um, they went to what they called at the time as school cadet units. So these were like um, school based army cadet units. Today the cadet units are run by the Australian Army and financed by the Australian Army so it's been a transition since that time. Um, the 310 cadet uh, uses a round uh, which is actually called the 310 Greener. Okay, it's a slightly tapered um, cartridge, rimmed, uh, and it's uh, supposed to take a projectile which is uh, 323 in diameter. So there was a number of these rifles which were introduced in Australia in the early 1900s in small numbers um, but the, the largest batch of them um, came in from about 1910 and 1911 uh, and the majority of them were manufactured by Birmingham Small Arms uh, from UK, from England. Um, there were others, there was a, another manufacturer, Wesley Richards, uh, and also WW Greener themselves. So you can find all three different versions of them from the three different manufacturer, but the majority of them that you'll find around are all made by BSA. So they're based on a miniaturized or a miniature uh, martini action, being a single shot uh, action. And uh, this particular one here. Uh, is what they call the Francot version um, of the Martini action and that is that the whole uh, firing action and trigger group with one knock out of this pin the whole lot can be removed in one go for maintenance and cleaning whereas a normal uh, Martini action it's got a couple of screws and it comes out through the top to disassemble it. Uh, so let's go into the rifle now. Um, this one as you can see Manufactured by uh, Birmingham, Birmingham Small Arms uh, Company Limited. It's got a trademark and a little symbol with cross rifles on there. It's kind of like a lever action gun where you open the breech with a lever. Load one round in and close it up again ready for firing. You can see at the top here is a little cocking indicator that sticks up when it's when it's in the cock position. When you pull the trigger, it drops down. This version. So this one's got what they call the second pattern sight, which you can see is a uh, thread adjustable sight, uh, which is fits for what the purpose of these guns were, which was for teaching cadets marksmanship. So therefore allows uh, quite a good deal of accuracy and fine adjustment. The first pattern had more of a simple ladder type side on it. Uh, 
Uh, moving down, simple front barrel band and a fixed barley corn type front sight blade. This rifle's got a bit of uh, patina on it, obviously you can see. Shows its wear, shows its usage. Still got some nice timber on it though. Of course the buttstock, like any of these old rifles, is the part that's generally in the worst condition. Quite pitted, knocked about. It is what it is. On the back, buttstock number, 210 with this one, and this one's got CMF SA, which stands for Commonwealth Military Forces, South Australia. Buttstock number again, 210. They've all got uh, Commonwealth of Australia stamped on them, serial numbers on them. You often find some of the states would have stamped their state abbreviation there Vic for Victoria or NSW for um, New South Wales up here too as well, but South Australia didn't. Well, not in this version anyway. You can see here in the stampings in here, 310, 12, 120. That's a 120 grain projectile, 310, I'm not sure what the 12 is. Okay, so I'll show you this ammunition I've got here too. This is some old stuff that I've been given. Generally there was two types of ammunition that were available in Australia, one made by Connock from England and also by Sportco which was a, a company that took a lot of these um, rifles when they were um, surplused from the army and converted them to calibers such as 22 long rifle, um, triple two, triple two rimmed, 22 hornet. So you find some gunsmiths around have modified them to 357 magnum also. But there's two types of ammunition in this box. This one's the Kynock version. It's kind of like a waxed projectile the same as a 22 long rifle in fact the original projectile like this is a healed projectile exactly like a 22 long rifle and that's why it's been sort of divoted to hold it in there and this other one's the Sportco simplex projectile made in Australia again it's waxed again but I'm not going to shoot those I'm going to just keep those you can see the box has had a bit of a hard time in its life Okay, so we're, uh, we're back. I had to take a little break there because um, it's wet season at the moment in North Queensland and uh, it started pouring outside. And honestly, with the noise that uh, that rain was going to make on this iron roof down the shed, you wouldn't have been able to hear me speak. But anyway, let's get into this now. I'm just going to uh, disassemble the action on this so I can get to uh, show you the inside of it. I won't go through the full disassemble on the rifle as uh, most everything else is just a few screws and etc. But when you um, want to take your screws apart uh, on these old guns, they're all flat tip screws, so you want to be using a hollow ground tip screwdriver like this. Okay, don't use a standard screwdriver that you'd see for uh, household use. Get one of these hollow tip ground because then they won't uh, destroy the edges on the screws in the guns. And for an old gun like this, or any old antique guns, you don't want to be screwing up the screws. Oh, there's a use of language there because uh, difficult to replace so get yourself a kit um, and you'll see here I've just got a range of the um, hollow tip size uh, sort of hollow ground tips for the uh, for different screws and you want to get it to fit as tight as you can into the slot of course um, when you go into the slot as well clean it out use something sharp and clean the inside of the screw head out first so that the uh, the tip will will drive right down deep into the bottom of the socket. So the other screws on the gun would just be, if you were disassembling it, would be just the uh, barrel band there and the butt stock at the back there. There's a couple in there as well. Am I showing that? Yeah. All right. But what I'm going to go through now is quickly um, how to take out the action out of the center and show you that. So we're just going to use a piece of timber just to rest the firearm on 
And like I said, this is a Francot action martini, uh, sorry, martini action. And it'll come out with one pin. Now you'll see this pin on the other side. While it looks like a screw head, it's not. It's actually like a spring split pin. And you'll see that come out in a second. So don't go try screwing that uh, out with a uh, screwdriver. It'll just keep spinning all day. So you can see I'm just going to put a punch here on top. careful not to touch the receiver okay now you see the other side of that you see this all just goes into a recess in the edge of the receiver there and you see that that's not really a screw at all it's a it's a split pin I'll knock that right out and show you like that so you can see that's a that's a split pin, not a not a screw. You see which way it goes back in. It's got to line up with a little detent and receiver there. Okay, so now to get the rest out, simply just open it, and it just pops out like that. Okay, it's got a like a ball joint thing at the end here, it fits into a recess in the back of the receiver there. Okay. Otherwise, that's what the action looks like. You cock it. Just like that. This is your extractor. You can see it hasn't got a lot of effort on the extractor. When the bridge block comes down, hits onto the uh, bottom of this extractor lever here, and that's all you got for extracting, basically. That action there is all you've got to pull the shell out of the out of the chamber that you got to do it hard you know you give it a, a good hit and it does flick it out so to disassemble this further for cleaning these pins in here are not threaded or anything they just push straight out and you pull it apart and clean it up further if you want to but generally it doesn't get too dirty from there all you've got to do is just take this apart and give it a spray out maybe give the face a wipe the bolt face of white. This doesn't generally get too dirty. Obviously if you bought a rifle for the first time and all this was gummed up uh, from someone else not maintaining it as well as it should be, and you can pull this down and then um, clean it all out. Put it in a bath of petrol or kerosene or something to get all the gunk out of it. Okay, and that's how it operates. Okay, to put it back together again, you just put this heel in, back in first. Yeah, it's not going to want to go back in for me. Just like that. And get the pin. See the pin's got to go from this side. I'm sure, if you can see that. Can you see the recess that's inside that hole there? Put the pin in. Give it a knock with a soft-faced hammer. Back together again. Just like that. Okay. So in part two of this video, I'm going to go into uh, reloading for the 310 cadet um, it can be a little uh, uh, there's a couple of challenges you have to get through with the with loading the 310 cadet and that is that each rifle is very much individual and often there's a quite a, a deal of variances between chamber sizes uh, and even barrel uh, dement diameters as well in these rifles but uh, once you work out what is going to work for your rifle, it's not a hard task to repeat that action and just keep reproducing ammunition. There is uh, components available which you can buy, at least in Australia. Um, but if you're in uh, somewhere overseas, you might have to um, get a mould. But then you can buy moulds from Australia and get them sent over as well. So uh, stay tuned for the next uh, part. I'll take the rifle to the range. I'll get some footage of uh, shooting it. And then we'll go through how, to, or how I reload. 
uh, without casting my own ammunition, uh, without casting my own bullets for the 310 Cadet. Thanks very much for watching.